Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Art of Slowing Down podcast. It is Annalena here, your host. And today I have another amazing guest here with me. His name is Chris Ayub. And I think I'm going to have you actually introduce yourself a little bit and tell us what we're going to talk about today. Sounds great. Thank you so much for, for having me. Grateful to be here. So my name, as you said, Chris Ayub. Uh, a little bit about my background. I'm a Army and Air Force veteran. I actually served in, in two two different branches. Graduated from the Air Force Academy, active duty officer. I'm an Operation Iraqi Freedom veteran, and uh, I cross commissioned into the Army. And in terms of like corporate experience, I've been in management consulting. And prior to this endeavor that we're talking about, I I was the president of a, the third largest homeowner association management firm in the United States. And uh, yeah, so now I'm now I'm 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 the executive producer for a seven part docu series called the Religion Business, and we're doing a deep dive into how religion. It's a lot to unpack if you think about you know the two thousand years. We're focused mainly on you know the, on Western Christianity because that's where we were we we were raised in myself mm-hmm. and the doctor. and uh, so unpacking you know, back to 2000 years to when, when Jesus is on earth and then going even further back, we're unpacking about 3,500 years of, of history to how we got to where we're at today and how religions evolved into a business. And so we're taking a look at the good, the bad, and mm-hmm. uh, having a healthy discussion with the community and coming up with a solution, a tech type solution to solve the problems that are uncovered in the docu series that will be coming out in August of 2024. I love it. And so I love this because, I mean, on my podcast, I personally, and I know you're not too much into that and we don't have to dive deep into that today, but I talk about spiritual concepts a lot, which is in a way, you know, people that don't resonate with the traditional religions, they go to astrology or human design, gene keys. That's what I'm more into. And even there, I have also noticed sometimes I think it's from the human need to feel safe and loved and belonging and feel accepted in some way or belong to something that we can easily fall for things where it then becomes kind of like a dogma or even like a cult in some way, right? Where there's this one leader that you feel like is above everything and I have to obey and we're not being ourselves, right? So I think, and I have also, I think, recently i don't know what the name was there was a documentary on netflix it was about a couple that was doing this twin flame coaching maybe you have seen it I've heard, I've heard of twin oh flame. my gosh i was shocked because they were brainwashing people it was crazy and people spent tons and tons of money into that and invested and it was all a big kind of humbug and very i think at some point the guy was even saying he was jesus or something like that and i was like oh my gosh it was really this this like i am the god and you have to follow what everything i'm saying so that we get so disempowered as people and for me also the work that i'm doing my only purpose is here so it empowers people to be themselves to be self-empowered and have the freedom to be yourself right but not that you're going to be dependent or codependent on anything so i would love to hear from you first of all like how did this all come about and what intrigued like an interest for you to even talk about because I think the main topic here is that people are taking advantage of a lot with religion as a business and there's a lot of money right circulating 100 percent, a lot of money just to, to to point out to like this topping to the the top of the of, of the pyramid there with that is it's 890 billion dollars a year that's donated annually to the western christian church so that's that's kind of what, what we're working with here. And backing up a little bit to answer your question, how did I get involved with this? So my partner in this endeavor is a gentleman named Nathan Atfield. Nathan is a two-time Emmy award-winning filmmaker, and he's been working on this docuseries for over a decade. Initially, when he started, you know, he had noticed some, some just some lost a lot of trust. He got burned in the, in the, in the in, with the religious institutions a couple of times. He had a lot of trust with some religious leaders and he saw firsthand some abuse that that you know that was taken that was taking place there and just create a lot of distrust so he started going down the rabbit hole further and further and further and then fast forward a few years he was blessed with a little girl his daughter was born and i think it just he really like he put the docuseries on the shelf and really resonated with him about 
the world he wants his daughter to be raised in mm. and the future. And there's so much distrust in the religious institution, but religion in itself could be a very beautiful thing. So I, some of the points you mentioned earlier, right, like being a part of something, feeling safe, feeling like you have a purpose, feeling like you have a higher calling, all those types of things. And so he just started going down a lot of rabbit holes and learning, yeah, $890 billion gets, gets donated every year. And then as we go further and further, finding out that 6% of that money that's donated annually, it's reported, gets stolen internally by, by church staff. So approximately $53 billion is, is stolen internally. Wow, and that's so a lot of money. <laughs> it is. What piqued my interest with this is I felt like, okay, so I'm not, I'm not a filmmaker. I, 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 you know, I don't have a Hollywood background. I'm a military guy and an entrepreneur, businessman, and leader. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've had a lot of success with deal making in the past, and I kind of like it's like okay i had this opportunity presented to me through through a, a business colleague of mine who said hey i want you to meet this filmmaker and he's referring to nate and when i was deciding and evaluating whether or not i wanted to get into it, it's understanding I, you, you use the word like you know like we talk about purpose right purpose is such a huge thing what would be my purpose in this because I'm a firm believer in energy as well, too. When you put something out there, right, the universe responds to it, how, mm -hmm. how it, and going out and challenging an industry that's $890 billion uh, in coming every year, there's going to be a lot of controversy around that. And you're going to create a lot of, you know, you're going to create a lot of, you know, there's a lot of chaos involved with that and understanding you know, what is this, you know, there's easier paths in this world. And why would I want to be involved with something that's such a tough path like this? And the answer to me is that 890 billion gets donated every year. And I mentioned 6% gets stolen internally. The other number that comes with 6% is only around 50 billion of that money actually leaves the institutional walls for outside missions in the world. Mm -hmm. And being a combat veteran, Myself, so we have 6,400. So the way the VA, the Veterans Report does this is, is that they release a, a report. The last report that came out was 2023, but the 2023 report goes off of 2021 data. Um, okay. So almost 6,400 veterans committed suicide. And that breaks, that breaks my heart. You know, we, we have all this, all these, all these selfless individuals and such. And I'm like, okay, well, the current structure and program for mental health isn't really as effective as it should be. That number should not be that high. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look at the fact that there's over 30,000 homeless veterans and veterans have, you know, support structures with the VA and such. And so it's, that number is way too high. You've got 330 million people across the world that are suffering from food insecurity in perspective, there's 340 million people in the United States. And so you look at all that and you say, wow, I would love to work with the shepherds of these churches. I would love to find a way to bring healing to the world because all of this is unnecessary. The resources are there. So how can we bring some accountability to the system and that's kind of why mm -hmm. we wanted technology application to solve these problems and bring the leaders of these churches, bring the donors who are, are, are contributing their hard earned money and bring a lot of think tanks that are out there that have put a lot of research and time into, Hey, like, how do we solve a homeless problem? How do we solve malaria? How do we solve for tuberculosis? Right? So just like malaria, like for $1.1 billion, you could save 200,000 lives various mm -hmm. diseases. I mean, over 1.5 million people are dying annually from various chronic diseases, you know, for, for around 4 billion, you can solve that. So I start thinking, okay, well, if I could bring all of that together, like a deal, right? Like mm -hmm. and you, my capabilities that I've been blessed with to bring healing to the world and the resources are there. Wow. That would be beautiful. That would be amazing. And on top of that, it would bring a lot of trust back into the system. I, I, I know probably come across several folks and even myself, right? Like there's a lot of people have stayed away from religion because 
there's a negative connotation with it. There's distrust there. Mm. And right now we have over 40,000 denominations alone in the, like in, in, in the world of Christianity. And that's just, that's wow. a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. 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 And let me ask you from what you were sharing about the money numbers, right? Is there something going on you think with corruption? Is there probably a lot of greed happening? Because my what I'm sensing is that because I, I think we have enough money in the world, that's not the issue. We have all the solutions to solve the problems. I just and because I also talk about this a lot in my space in the coaching space, because there's always this like more, 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 more money, make more money, make more money. And there there's some that have a lot and way more than we ever need to yes. live a healthy, happy, prosperous life. And then the greed kicks in and there are other ones. So the the gap is getting bigger and bigger, basically, right? And I think that greed has a lot to do with that, but I want to hear what your thoughts are on that. So the, there's the, there's the system is, is that, that a church in the United States doesn't have to pay any taxes and doesn't have to do document, like reporting, financial reporting to... The IRS. And so when you're in a system where there's already no accountability right there, transparency, you're cre you're you're already in a place where humans will human. We're mm -hmm. human beings, like we're broken it people. And so when you're in this environment where we're we're biologically designed and it's it and it's every human will face this, this is, it's never enough, right? It's like the dangle of carrot. I'll be happy when yes. I get that and I make over 100k a year I'll be happy when I'm able to buy that new sports car I'll be happy when I have a second home I'll be happy when I'll be happy when I'll be happy when I get a mansion I'll be happy when I get a private jet and it just keeps going on and on and on and then you create this uh, ridiculous lifestyle that you can't unwind and mm -hmm. so it's feeding itself and that's the like the system we're in every bit of marketing every bit of every agenda is to sell a lifestyle that is just not realistic right and you know you, you examine people's lives and you if people who are become accountable people who are open and vulnerable they'll end up telling you that the most miserable they've ever been in their life is, is when they they had all this money because yeah. because it was never enough like they 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 began to worship money and they say avarice is the root of all evil mm -hmm. yeah i have actually made a podcast episode about this over a year ago was called are you putting money on a pedestal right and i have heard this now so many times that especially the people that have a lot a lot of money that they're often the most stressed because they have also created a lifestyle where they have to creating a lot more money consistently and i think honestly out of the fear of you know not i mean losing it all in some way i think people start to do things in an unethical way or push their body way too much, often I think not even intentionally do, do something bad, right? I don't want to point fingers at people, but because of this, it's almost an addiction, right? Like you say, more and more. And then you realize it's almost like, I mean, like a drug in some way. You're like, now I have the Ferrari and, oh, but I'm still not happy. What's next? We're always chasing and we can never ever be content with what is. And I think I mean, you know, Eckhart Tolle, I would, I would think the the power of now or about, you know, mindfulness, which is all about yeah. the secret to life is being happy with what is. And when you are there, everything you will always be taken care of, you know, and I have also found now many people there, the happiest when they have a very minimalistic lifestyle where they're just, some people thrive, they have a tiny house and they live out in the nature and they have their own garden. I, that's honestly more prosperity for me than having millions in my bank account and being dependent on grocery stores, you know, that spray all the pesticides. I mean, anyways, that's just a little. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a, you know, when I mentioned earlier about the people in the world solving chronic diseases, I mean, that's part of the problem, right? It's, it's the, you know, what we put into our bodies creates a lot of the, a lot of the problems that, that we have, but we just, we just don't see it because there's just a lot of blind, blind trust that's out there. You brought up the word fear earlier, and I've often shared this and last business I ran, I shared this with all my employees is false evidence appearing real fear. Mm -hmm. And then it's, 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 you know, talent, you know, that fear drives the worst and just in every, in every human, but we're all, we're all 
you know, everyone's created equal, right? But we're all, we're all created differently. We're all yeah. met for a different purpose, yeah. and being con being content with who you're designed to be. I'm not saying being content with like like you should always be finding with who you you are in terms of just sitting stagnant. No, you, you mm -hmm. every day strive to get to know yourself a little bit better. Every day striving to find the best version of who you are, but you can't find the best version of who you are if you're not willing to be vulnerable because there is no, there is no, like you can't be courageous without being vulnerable. You just can't. We're so caught up in this, even our like political system in the United States. I mean, it attracts nothing but narcissists for the most part, because it's, it's, it's people who try to like portray that they live this perfect life. Mm -hmm. And you see the pastors out there too, like, no, like we're humans. We sit, we're broken. And, mm -hmm. and, and today I'm going to be the best that I can be, but I'm going to be accountable and be the best version. That's so much more relatable than sitting up there condemning the world and condemning everybody for their behavior. But behind closed doors, you're no better. You're doing the same thing. And not being real with the world is like, it's, it's just, it's just a recipe for distrust. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. It's so in the documentary, tell us a little bit of it's it's I think you said it's a seven part documentary that's coming out August 2024. Yes. So it it does it just it does a deep a deep dive, lots of discussions with pastors, religious scholars, former chief counsel to the to the IRS for you know has a lot of experience there dealing with nonprofits. Because you, you talk about nonprofits, there's there's two different types. There's secular and non-secular, right? So what's the uh, what's the difference there? So one is religious and the other one's not. So the ones that are in the religious, the ones that are not religious form form or submit annually a 990, which shows your revenue expenses, salary, top mm -hmm. salary, things like that. And so there's a little bit more, not a little bit, a lot more transparency and accountability there. On the church side. On the religious side, they don't have to, and like, so real. Just so to ask, have, there, there's nothing they have to report to anywhere. They don't have to report anything to the IRS. Now they have mm -hmm. a they report, and not all. Not I mean, some of them are very transparent, but a lot of them just will flash some pie charts in front of people. And yeah, you know, there's you could put like you just bucket things, right? Miscellaneous missions, right? You know, there's 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 things they communicate to the congregation. But they're not as open, like, for example, like pastors receive housing stipends sometimes. That's not reported to the congregation often. They'll say they're getting a $50,000 salary or, or, or whatever for a salary that's more acceptable to the congregation, but they're not going to tell them that, oh, yeah, well, they get a housing stipend on top of that and they get a car and then they get, they get you know, you know, full-time staff member to assist, assist them on, you know, and their, and their personal side type of life. So there's, there's a lot that gets uncovered. There's a lot of, you know, you want to call it controversial type, you know, things that haven't been uncovered yet that, that, that do. And then we also highlight some folks that are doing an amazing, amazing, amazing job, but it's meant to just put out there that this is a problem. Mm. This is, out there, like looking at the processes and procedures and the and, and the system, and how can we how can we fix this? And I don't oh I don't believe that a lot of people will say oh let's get the government involved and tax them. Well, we're thirty something trillion dollars in debt. Like we're gonna have one like one group that can't manage a budget and manage money take money from another group that can't manage money. Like the power needs to go back to the people mm -hmm. in, in, to control where they spend. And if people are transparent about how the money's being used, then people can make an educated decision on who they want to donate their money to. Yeah. And if there's eyes on it from the people who are donating it and from the general public, then you're going to start getting some social issues finally solved in this world. And, and the reality of it is, is it's like, we think that the government, and this is a general thing, we think it's the government's responsibility to solve many of our social issues in our country and across the world. I think the church should play a role in that. I think the church has the resources to do so. 
And some of them I mentioned earlier, the homelessness, like people died from like things like malaria, tuberculosis, world hunger, all those types of things. Like that, that's something the church could solve. Like when you talk about like mission trips and fun and, 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 and some medical type of things. I mean, churches, yeah, they've opened up, you know, universities, hospitals, right? Like we need more of that, but when we need more of that, we need transparency into more of that, right? Like yeah. it's, a hey, 40 to 45 billion dollars a year will solve world hunger if you spend that amount annually between 2030. Well, I'd like to know how much of that money is actually being used to feed people. Yeah, right? yeah, that's true. No, it's a good yeah. point because I mean, what I love what you share. So it's not to say, right, everything is bad with religion or everybody's doing something wrong because I'm sure there's lots and lots of churches, yeah. religious institutions where they're actually doing something really good and it's also important for them. So they, they're they not going to be in this bad light either. But I, I totally agree with you. I mean, even talk about food hunger, a world hunger in the U.S. I mean, how much food gets thrown out is just ridiculous. When I first yeah. came to the U.S. and I saw the amount of plates, how much the, nobody can eat this. Of course, everybody's obese, obviously. And then everything gets thrown out. Like garbage here is like, People don't even, I don't know, it's its ridiculous for where I come from, where I grew up in Germany. And I think even in Germany is is probably not the, we don't, we could do better there as well. So, um, but also hearing what you're saying, like there's so much money that, I mean, it's ridiculous. This amount of money, there's no transparency. And I mean, what I think probably lots of money goes to way too high salaries or one person just gets it all but it, it's not being used 44 percent of that figure goes to salaries 44 like, wow yeah and and you brought up like you were talking about like in the united states like the like the, the obesity side of things well we like the way the system is designed i mean even just like with social media and like what our children are are like wrapped wrapped up in in this world mm. it, concept of we need instant gratification right so it's like i feel a little emotion i need to eat <laughs> i might be hungry well are you really hungry or is that like the sugar craving you're having yeah. yeah i need i need i need hey like i you know it's it's instant gratification because we get instant answers off of off of everything and it creates a very like lazy fat society obese society mm. yeah very thought provoking what what you're sharing. So what are some of the solutions that you see how this could be? I think you were saying that this can be fixed or at least yeah. put so on a better path of trajectory. We're we're working on working on a on, on a tech on a tech solution with it, but I it like so I I and I, I I don't I don't want to get like too too deep into the tech solution just yet, but at a very high level of it, it's bringing the power back to the people. So it's the concept of being transparent, having a platform for people to be transparent mm -hmm. with the churches and nonprofits are spending their money. And that allows the people, the congregation, the donors to be connected to them and to mm -hmm. understand how that money's being spent. And like, if, I, if, if the people they give the power to the people, so the people have eyes on it, there's a sense of accountability there because they're the ones making the decision to donate. If you are cool with your pastor using your money to have a private jet, like that's a decision you make. It mm. is. Mm. I don't agree with you. I'm just saying that that's your decision. That's your money you earn. You can spend that however you choose to spend it. But you deserve the right and have the right to know how the money you are donating is getting spent because it might not be in line with what you think and you need to know that. And so having a platform and a system that has that environment and produces that type of data brings accountability, transparency, and eventually trust back into the system. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think technology-wise, we have all the the tools in this world, right? We're so advanced these days, so it's all it's all possible. But but yeah, I agree with you. It's it's about 
we should have the right to know if we donate money somewhere where it's actually being used. And if it just goes to a lavish lifestyle that is not necessary for very few, but then it's not being used to actually help solve some problems that we do have really the resources for. And it's also about this like reallocation of resources, right? We have the resources. It's just kind of like, kind of this way up in some ways. And it's also, I mean, so many things. I, I talk a lot about money in particular on my podcast. I call it like conscious money where, you know, I think the more money we have access to, like even like you and I, right? Let's say my coaching business next year is going to hit the millions or something like that. I'm going to have really a responsibility because I think we all are vulnerable or susceptible to getting into the greed. And now I can buy all the fancy Gucci shoes and everything. And yeah. I think some luxury is fine and nice, but where I think responsibility comes in is like, when I'm spending the money, do I spend this on a company that actually cares about the environment? Or is this a company that produces everything in China and there's child labor or something like that, right? Because if I put my money there, I, I keep reinforcing the imbalance in some way. And absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's all about from what I'm sensing you you describe, it's all about reallocation of the resources that are already there and, and getting it a little bit more equal. Yeah. I mean, just just the money. So like two two things. One, at today's interest rates, just like off of $890 billion that could solve world hunger, just the interest rate alone. Mm, true. Beyond solve it. Then, then on top of that, if we could stop, like, have more accountability in the system and and people are not stealing money, you know, from the own staff members from the church, then, like, that in itself would solve the problem. And there's so much trust that's there, you know, when you go into a, go into a church. I mean, people pull out, they, they throw cash into the, into the offering, right? And mm. where's, like, the accountability with, for cash? It's just... It's not really there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you put a little bit of light onto that. And I think it would be good if there is some accountability that it's actually being reported. I mean, I don't know if that can be a new law or something like this where we have to file a petition for it and lots of people have to sign for it where it's actually like, hey, but I guess that's a big difference, right? If if religious institutions nonprofits they don't have to report anything basically well obviously that is almost an invitation like yeah just do whatever you know Even i mean like, isn't the law itself enabling that that's my question oh the, yeah the way the system structure does 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 enable that 100 percent. so uh, the, i think the code <laughs> the code for nonprofits was was built in 1912 and at the time there were not that many nonprofits now Approximately like ten percent of the United States is employed by a nonprofit, and you know there's more churches than Starbucks by a landslide. Well, and there's lots of Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah, yeah, there's more nominations too than Starbucks. But, yeah. But yeah, wonderful. So, Chris, tell me, like, where can people find more about? I know there's a website. You have an Instagram. Tell me a little bit more, like how people can find you guys or do a little bit more research or support so the project. Posting quite a bit of content. We just we just started our channels over the last couple of months. The religion business is mm -hmm. how you would religionbusiness.com, uh, Instagram, the religion business, TikToks, the religion business, mm -hmm. um, as well with X. So we're we're on we're on those those platforms. So please give us a follow and and Take a look at our content and participate in the conversations that are happening. You don't have to agree with us. We're meant, we're, we're, our intention is to create a community where people can have a healthy dialogue and discussion about, about the religion business and provide that. And, and, and so participate in the, in the dialogue, follow, we're putting a lot of good educational content out there, a lot of conversations. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're excited to be, to have as many people on this journey with us as possible. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for uh, for sharing this with us. And and what I love is that it seems to be an expansive intention where it's not like, oh, this is the one truth or this is it's it's more like, hey, we want to create awareness of what's going on so we can make yeah. this right. 
and not just say every religion or every church is bad. I mean, it's more like, you know, let's let's help the ones that are, because I'm sure there's lots of churches that are doing amazing things in the world, right? And yeah. they are going to be suffering because there may be other ones that are totally taking advantage of the system in some way. So I really appreciate you just bringing up this topic and open up the conversation so that we can all be more aware and then can make, you know, more educated decisions on where we put our money, what we invest into, or what we spend our money on. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And yeah. thank you for having me. And I've really enjoyed our conversation and I look forward to continuing a dialogue down the road with you. Yeah, wonderful. And before I let you go, I always have this one question. I hope it's not going to throw you off, but <laughs> what's one nugget of wisdom, you know, that has been life-changing for you or something that you really live by that you would like to share with the listeners? Uh, wow. Yeah, I've got a few things running, 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 running through my head here. I would say that life is not meant to be to be easy. There is no gain without some pain. I'm not trying to make a rhyme here. It's just, it's just. And if you are, you know, you 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 have, if you go to the gym and you go and work out. If you're not a little bit sore, you're not building. You're not. So if you're not a little bit sore in life, then you're not growing. And if you're if you're not like I got told this when I was in the Army Special Operations School, you're either improving or you're getting worse. You get better, or you're getting worse. There's no such thing as staying the same because as humans, we have to constantly evolve, right? Like yeah. things is daily. And if we're not evolving in our business, if we're not evolving as us individually, as we continue to grow up and mature, we're not mm -hmm. getting better. And so I would say that if, if you're not like, you will never know your potential or realize your potential if you don't get out of your comfort zone and yeah. your comfort zone is very comfortable. That's why it's called a comfort zone and mm -hmm. you will fall to the side and if you want to make a difference in this world and you want to be something for your children and you want to be something and make an impact here, you got to be vulnerable. You got to have courage and you have to, to take a few hits in life because otherwise you're not going to ever figure out who really God designed you to be. It's my opinion. No, I love that. I have, I mean, I've been realizing that myself was, and especially here in America, the land of convenience, right? Everything is like, let's be comfortable, let's be comfortable. And even honestly, I mean, our conversation today, right? I think it's something, I mean, maybe by now, not anymore, because I also talk about very similar yeah. topics. But in the very beginning, when I started to talk about spirituality and human design and all these things, like our conversation we had today three years ago, I would be like, no, I can't. What are people going to think? You know, and the, because the people pleasing, that's also like we stay in our comfort zone and we suppress our truth because we want to just keep the peace. And but we have to speak our truth, right? That's your truth. And it's not to badmouth every anything or whatever, but that's your truth. And that helps people. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's yeah. So what can you do today to get a little bit out of your comfort zone? You may grow from that. So thank you, Chris, for that wisdom. Thank you again for having coming on on my podcast. I'm having you here and it was such a pleasure and I wish you tremendous success and yeah, I can't wait to have a peek myself when it's coming out in August, 2024 and you listeners as always, thank you for being here and I'm excited to be with you all on the next episode. Thank you.